Welcome back to Global Business Europe. China's trade figures dipped unexpectedly at the start of the year. The data, the first China has released since the end of its zero COVID policy, shows the negative growth recorded since October has continued into the new year. The fall also comes despite a jump in trade with Russia and stronger than expected global demand for Chinese cars. Exports for January and February were down 6.8% on the same time last year. It comes after a surprise fall of nearly 10% in December, while imports dropped off more sharply. They were down by 10.2%. That's bigger than the fall recorded in December, which showed the amount of goods arriving in China was down 7.5% on the year before. I've been speaking to Mark Oswald, who's chief economist and global strategist at ADM ISI. I asked him what's behind the drop in exports. Well, it's, uh, one has to actually delve down a little bit into the detail. Um, actually, the export data to ASEAN, uh, which was up almost 10% uh, year on year, is very encouraging because it does actually underline that Asia is really starting to pick up. And I think that was that probably the more important point than the weakness of exports to the U.S., uh, which were down um, a little bit more than 10%, and to uh, the EU, which were down about 2.5%. Um, that's not really surprising given the challenges that there have been and the inflation that there is and also the, the battles that's going on in terms of technology. So I actually think you know, the, the overall down 6.6 .6 was a lot better than people had been expecting. Um, there are going to be challenges though as we go through the year because demand in both the EU and the US is probably going to be weak for much of the year. So a bit of a mixed picture for China then. Is it a similar picture elsewhere in Asia? Um, I, I, th I think in terms of the rest of Asia, you're, you're seeing particular weakness um, in South Korea and in Taiwan. That has all to do with technology. And this is a broader thing because it, but, but one, it's a perspective thing because I think people don't actually quite appreciate just how much we bought in the way of technology during COVID. And now we've sort of reached this sort of peak level and we're coming off that peak. It was never going to be sustained at the sort of level that we were seeing. And it's going to take uh, three to six months before we actually see where it's going to settle and then we can get an idea of what is the so-called new normal in terms of demand. So we saw imports uh, down, uh, particularly in semiconductor chips. Is that just a, a lack of demand as well? Um, I, I think it's both a lack of domestic demand and it's also, a, you know, in terms of re-export uh, for finished products, whether it's mobile phones, tablets, um, um, PCs, uh, there is clearly a very sharp drop in demand and we've seen that reflected in the layoffs that we're seeing in the technology sector overall. Um, I, I think in terms of imports, the encouraging part was that uh, both coal imports and um, iron ore imports were up quite sharply. They tend to be leading indicators uh, for the Chinese economy. Um, or, you know, if people are stocking up, they are obviously feeling more confident that demand is going to be stronger going forward. The fact that you've got weaker things like in terms of some of the agricultural imports, that you really can't. You, a, a lot of that is actually highly deceptive. Um, one should overinterpret uh, over one month's data. But I think uh, you know, the other areas are still very much dependent on things picking up in the, the construction sector. And that will take a little bit of time. And it's not going to be something where you suddenly, uh, as with reopening, you don't see a sudden boom. There needs to be uh, a lot more confidence in the construction sector. And so it will pick up gradually. China has been talking there about uh, modernizing their economy to pivot away from uh, manufacturing exports towards uh, new sectors and domestic consumption. Are we seeing that in practice? Um, again, you know, this isn't the first time that, that there's been moves to try and uh, pick up uh, private consumption. Um, as yet, I would say we're still, China is still very much reliant on the investment sector, i.e. the manufacturing sector. Um, I think they can turn it around, but it's going to take a lot more confidence and uh, probably a lot more infrastructure investment in the services sector to bring, really get that going. 